attachment. Attachment. Attachment style. What is the key to a happy relationship? In the book Attached, the authors argue that the secret is understanding attachment styles. But what are attachment styles in the first place? How can we use this to find an amazing relationship or improve the ones that we already have? In today's video, I break down the book Attached in just 20 minutes. And some of the things that we're going to talk about in this video are what are secure and insecure attachment styles, why they matter, how attachment styles affect our needs in a relationship, how to resolve problems and handle conflict with attachment styles, the most dangerous and capable attachment partnership, and when to end the relationship. But most of all, you'll learn how to adopt the behaviors of the secure attachment style and use it to make your relationships not only more fulfilling, but actually be happy in your relationship in a practical way. Before we start, please support the authors, Dr. Amir Levine and Rachel Heller by purchasing their book. And quick shout out to Shortform for helping me prepare for this video. But first, this is me. I grew up in an Asian household. I had to figure out a lot of things on my own, like dating. Fast forward to my mid thirties. I was going through breakup after breakup, not knowing why. Sometimes I would feel so anxious that my partner would leave me. Other times I felt so suffocated and just wanted to be alone. But it wasn't until my friend Athena recommended this book, Attached, where I wasn't as crazy as I thought I was. Maybe it was because I was completely unaware of my attachment style. But what is an attachment style in the first place? One thing you could learn that would give you the opportunity to create a deep, amazing, fulfilling, and secure romantic relationship, it would be learning your attachment style and about the attachment system. So if you ever dated, then you probably experienced asking yourself, why did this person suddenly ghost me? Or why is this person so damn clingy? While I like to believe that my date suddenly decided to go on a silent retreat after our first date, or that I'm such an awesome person to be around that this person feels a need to call and text me all the time, a more likely reason is probably something called attachment theory. Everyone has an attachment system or a mechanism in your brain, which helps you find, monitor, and maintain intimacy with the chosen partner. Think of it as an internal matchmaker that lives in our brain. It's part of our evolutionary adaptation, which helped us develop close bonds with others. However, everyone responds a bit differently to closeness. Sometimes it's due to dating experiences or our relationships with our caregivers growing up. Some people suppress intimacy, others embrace it. And this was the development of attachment styles. These are the beliefs and behaviors that determine how we function in intimate relationships. And there are three main styles. Secure attachers who are nurturing, responsive, and comfortable with intimacy. Anxious attachers who are also known as anxious preoccupied who constantly seek reassurance from their partner. And avoidant attachers also known as dismissive avoidant who are more distant and see intimacy as a threat to their independence. But okay, maybe you take a test. Maybe you actually figure out your attachment style. So why does this actually matter? Let's talk about it. How can I be certain I'm making the right choice? You don't know. The only way you will know is by being with that person, by exchanging, by discovering, by communicating, by exploring, by asking questions, by meeting. You'll feel much more relaxed if you allow yourself that uncertainty, that curiosity, that openness, rather than trying to, to know right away. Finding an emotionally satisfying romantic relationship actually helps us become more independent. But how does relying on someone make you more independent? And that's the paradox, especially in the world of online dating apps and hookup culture. Sometimes we underestimate the power of feeling safe. Long-term relationships, that's our safety net. When we fall, our partners catch us. We can feel a sense of security, comfort, love, and we actually feel more encouraged to become independent, bold, and brave. But what happens when our partners don't give us the emotional support that our brains crave for? We ask for it, we demand it, or even fight for it sometimes. We seek it out at all costs. And when our emotional needs aren't met, arguments erupt, relationships start to deteriorate, and since we don't feel safe in those moments of change, we lack the courage to be our best selves and thrive. From a neuroscience point of view, this can trigger our survival state. It can activate our amygdala, which turns off empathy, critical thinking, and emotional regulation. All these things are probably really important for a relationship. This is where attachment styles come into play. They help us understand both our own and our partner's needs. If you can decipher others' attachment styles, you'll be able to assess whether potential partner is actually capable of fulfilling those needs. And if you're already with a partner, you'll finally understand 
what lies at the root of your conflicts and how to resolve them. That is where the three main attachment styles, secure, anxious, and avoidant, come into play. Let me explain. Secure attachment. These people have a desire for intimacy, but are also comfortable with emotional distance. By default, secure attachers assume that their partners love them and don't worry about their relationships falling apart spontaneously. They are good at communicating their emotional needs and can keep their emotions steady when faced with adversity. And most of all, secure attachment styles tend to have happier relationships compared to insecure attachment styles. So if you're in a relationship with a secure attacher, you feel emotionally safe. Being with them makes it easier for you to face the outside world. Dating a secure attacher tends to make insecure attachers more secure. But what happens when you're secure yourself? Your relationship goal is to maintain your secure attachment style. You're good at recognizing cues that indicate compatibility, so you tend not to get trapped in negative relationships. But on the other hand, you may let negative behaviors repeatedly slide in, and sometimes, might stay in a relationship longer than you should. If you start to recognize the anxious or avoidant tendencies, it might be time to actually leave your relationship. Anxious attachment. Anxious attachers have a desire for intimacy with a romantic partner, but are hypersensitive to any threats that endanger the relationship. While they might not say it at the conscious level, anxious attachers tend to believe that their survival depends on the success of their partnership. It feels like life and death, so they tend to stay on guard. And when they do perceive a threat, they're flooded with activating strategies so that they can save the relationship, like constantly texting. It's only until that intimacy is reestablished where the anxious attacher kind of relaxes a little bit. But that protest behavior can cause harm in the relationship. And if you're an anxious attacher yourself, accepting your romantic needs is the key to developing a happy relationship. Way too often, anxious attachers try to ignore their needs for intimacy or reassurance because they feel ashamed of them. But this is the exact opposite that most experts recommend to do. If you don't accept these needs, I'll never give the opportunity for your partner to fulfill them. And sometimes, anxious attachers may select a partner who's incapable of fulfilling these needs. Regardless of the reason, anxious attachers tend to perpetually be unhappy because the relationship isn't giving or fulfilling their needs. Avoidant attachment. Avoidant attachers don't have that same desire to get as close with their romantic partners. But like everyone, they still seek an intimate connection. But what happens when the partnership gets too close? They feel suffocated. And oftentimes, this not only affects their romantic relationships, but parenting too. Experts say avoidant attachers may not enjoy parenting as much as secure attachers because they tend to find parenting more stressful. And if you're an avoidant attacher like myself, recognizing and combating your thoughts and actions can help you have a happy relationship. One strategy that is recommended is to second guess negative thoughts about your partner. Simply asking, is this really a problem or am I trying to push my partner away? If the thing you dislike about your partner isn't really a problem but still bothers you, maybe it's time to make an attempt to accept your partner's flaws. One of the ways to do this is to keep perspective of our own flaws, which may allow us to empathize with our partner. But okay, we understand the three different types of attachment styles, but which attachment style combination should you absolutely avoid and what can we learn from it? Well, let me explain. What is bickering? Bickering is low intensity chronic warfare. It's this notion that every time one person says something, the other person has a reaction to it. It's like you've got this proximity. It's like Silex, you know, and it constantly is friction, friction, but it is constantly negative friction. Anxious avoidant partnerships are the relationship death spiral. The attacher wants to be closer. Sometimes the avoidant attacher will fulfill the needs for increased intimacy with their partner, but over time, the avoidant attacher becomes uncomfortable and starts to withdraw. This is why we see ghosting sometimes. And when we see the avoidant attacher start to pull away, the anxious attacher responses by reconnecting even more, which then causes the avoidant partner to withdraw even more. While these partners may love each other, their interactions tend to worsen over time. And in the long term, they get stuck in a continuous cycle of conflict. With the tension of their needs unmet, constantly clashing, the relationship eventually ends. And most experts, they recommend to avoid this combination at all costs. Anxious attachers should avoid long-term relationships with avoidant attachers who can't meet their intimacy needs. Avoidant attachers should steer clear of anxious attachers who will exacerbate their desire for independence. But what happens if you're already in this relationship dynamic? Does it mean you gotta break up? Not exactly. 
how you heal this stuff is to learn how do I stand still. It's not just an intellectual thing. You need to learn and understand the intellectual, but to actually transform it requires a changing of your internal dialogue. So if you're already in a anxious avoidant partnership, what should you do? One way is that you can find a secure role model. By behaving like a secure person, this insecure attacher can gradually develop a more secure attachment style over time. The more secure the relationship tends to be, the more fulfilling it is as well. So how do you actually practice secure behavior effectively? Both partners should do the following three. Step one, find a role model who has a comfortable and secure way of dealing with others. Step two, practically think about what would they do? How would they act in these life situations? And when you do inevitably face conflict, step number three, think about what your role model would do in the moment and use their behavior to inform your own. While modeling a secure attacher is helpful, conflict will inevitably come up. So how do you actually manage this? Well, let's talk about that. All relationships are colored with expectations. We create the others in relationships and in communication. It isn't just that's who they are, and that's who we are. That is one of the most important things to understand about relationships and communication, is how people actually co-create each other in the context of a relationship, and why we are not the same person with different people. Because those people make part of who we are. How to behave more securely in your relationships. Whether we're single, partnered up, or booed up, learning to communicate like a secure attacher helps us thrive in intimate relationships. If you're seeking a new partner, communicating your needs to directly and honestly can help us choose someone who's actually emotionally capable of meeting them and weed out the ones who can't fulfill our needs. But how do you actually handle conflicts like a secure attacher? The goal is to express our needs and expectations directly in a non-threatening, inoffensive, and non-critical manner. And there's five rules for communicating this like a secure attacher. Rule one, be honest and speak openly. Remember, your needs matter, no matter how your partner feels about them. While it might be scary, it's only making your desires clear, giving your partner the chance and opportunity to fulfill your needs. Rule number two, express your needs directly without blaming or judging. Oftentimes we can use phrases like I need, I feel, and I want. Remember, your goal is not to make your partner feel inadequate. After all, their needs are just as valid as yours. Rule number three, use I statements to actually discuss your personal experience. Sometimes people will use I feel statements to blame the other partner. Common examples, I feel like you're unkind, but these statements actually hurt the discussion. This is about communicating your needs, not your partner's actions. Rule number four, use specific examples to communicate your concerns, especially in the beginning of the conversation. These are great for setting the tone of the conversation. Don't rely on generalities. Don't allow the opportunity for your partner to be like, what do you mean? This leaves room for misunderstanding. So stick to concrete language. Rule number five, and this is the one I always ignored in high school and college, time your discussion for when both parties are calm and collected. If the situation is already volatile, let it simmer down. Both people can't be in a survival state to have an open and honest discussion. Most people need to be in a relaxed setting to activate their prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for things like empathy, emotional regulation, and critical thinking. Things you probably want in a conversation like this. But what happens when your partner brings something to you when they're upset or emotionally charged? How do you diffuse it? And how do you resolve this situation tactfully? Just listen to the difference. I'm always the one who does the dishes. You never do the dishes. When's the last time that you ever put a plate in the, in the sink, let alone in the dishwasher, okay? Now, you know what? I had a really long day and I'm exhausted. Can you do the dishes tonight? Do you hear the difference? And do you hear which one is more likely to get you the thing that you're asking for. Even the most secure couples fight about basic daily life issues, but these arguments can actually help couples grow closer. Why? This is because secure attachers follow certain rules of communication that allow them to work through the conflict without destroying their relationship in the process. These are the following rules to actually work through it. Rule number one, prioritize both you and your partner's happiness. This is a partnership. The goal of every conflict is to end in a win-win situation. So 
before starting the conversation, set the tone, align with the shared purpose. You can demonstrate that you care about them by laying out the facts, expressing your feelings, and then asking your partner's perspective from there. Rule number two, keep the argument centered on the present issue. Sometimes in the heat of a moment, it's easy to get sidetracked or expand the argument to include other issues. So typically, a conflict about leaving the kitchen a mess shouldn't turn into an argument about who takes on more work in the household. But this is easier said than done. So if something comes up during the conversation that needs to be dealt with, it's recommended to schedule a separate conversation at a later time to discuss it. Rule number three, stay focused and don't distance yourself emotionally or physically. Oftentimes, we need to approach the issue head on until it gets resolved in a mutually agreeable way. At times, it's easy to feel threatened in the conversation, which can trigger a flight response. But focusing on the best intentions for both partners can help with the flight response as well. Step number four, tell your partner exactly what you need and want. No matter how long you've been with a partner, they can't anticipate all your needs. Telling your partner exactly what you want may also prevent miscommunication. Consider active listening. Before responding to your partner, you can repeat back what you think they said to help validate them and ensure that you're listening to them and understood their message correctly. My favorite technique, it's labeling from Never Split the Difference. It uses sensory language like it sounds like, it seems like, it looks like, it feels like. But what happens when you try all these things and you realize maybe this really isn't worth the effort? So when should you end the relationship? When we say, how do we get, how do I get over someone? We're really saying like, I want to forget them and I'll be, when I finally don't think about them and have no feelings for them, then I'll be done with it. But we never really forget people, right? And we shouldn't because, so it's more about finding what is the wisdom in the experience. Relationships aren't always cut clear and dry. They're messy and not all relationships can be fixed. If your partnership has become harmful and possibly abusive, then you may need to end it. Here are some of the signs according to the authors of when to end a relationship. Number one, your partner is kind to everybody else, but not to you. In fact, it's so bad that you don't even want to discuss with others about how your partner treats you. Number two, your partner values other opinions more than yours. Number three, you don't really know much about your partner's life, so you feel like you have to spy on them and find out. Number four, you don't know if you can count on your partner to be there in case of emergency situation. While these aren't absolute truths, our feelings along with this objective view on relationships can help us make the difficult decision to end the relationship. But now that you know these attachment styles, you're probably wondering, can I actually become a secure attacher? And so here's what I've experienced by doing that. If you want to change the other, change yourself. If you change one part and consistently, non-contingently hold on to it, sooner or later, the other one has to adapt. They say it takes about four years to make a complete shift from an insecure attachment style to secure it. And since my last breakup about a little over a year ago, I stayed single to really work on myself, specifically going from avoidant attachment style to secure. When I've implemented these steps for myself personally, I found that I'm able to communicate my needs better, recognize my default patterns, and understand the people around me for the better. This has not only helped me with my romantic life, but also my platonic and business relationships too. Instead of constantly obsessing about my shortcomings, I'm able to see the external factors around me affecting the relationship dynamics. As someone who's of avoidant attachment, I had to rely on myself for a lot of my needs growing up. Trusting people is really scary and new for me, especially when I've been cheated on in the past and abandoned by my closest relationships. Communicating my needs is something new because my Asian family dynamic was so volatile growing up. Sometimes it's really hard like really hard to have these discussions. And as I, I was learning about this, sometimes I wonder what could have happened if I actually knew about this earlier. But this book, Attached, it gave me the hope that I can change and I hope it'll do the same for you. That is Attached, Broken Down. And here are some other videos that you'll probably like. Stay compassionate, stay authentic, stay rebellious. Peace. Whoosh.